Hello again, this is video five uh, in this compositing video series. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, creating masks uh, for various purposes uh, using render layers and our render passes. Uh, in the previous video, video four, I had already created a mask to cut out the sky, uh, and I talked about uh, you know how I might use that to separate out uh, a background uh, sky plate that I might render from another program. This sky was rendered in view, uh, and how I could cut that out and put my Maya renders in front of that. So uh, I have a couple other different types of masks that I sometimes will use as well. Uh, and I just want to sort of uh, show those. Uh, here is one example. Uh, let me just open this up. Uh, I created a mask to just cut out the skin where I essentially applied a black material to everything else in the scene and just a white material just to the skin of my uh, character's face. Uh, the reason why I did that is it enabled me to apply that mask here inside of After Effects to uh, essentially recolor tone just the skin to give it a bit of luminance in post. That way I could change the color of the skin and not worry about uh, the color of the clothing changing a bit. So I was able to kind of warm up the skin that way by cutting out separate layers. Uh, you can see here where I've actually utilized that. So here is a you know mask for the skin. Uh, you know here's the rest of the clothing where things were a little bit bluer, and I'm able to kind of like separate out these individual elements when I'm putting together this character. Uh, another instance in where I uh, might use a sort of arbitrary mask like this. This is for uh, the background for another shot, which I haven't actually animated yet, but uh, I have this uh, background already rendered out. Uh, in this shot, I have this uh, cattle trailer, and uh, one of my other main characters, this cow, uh, walks into the trailer and kind of goes to the back. And I have all of these uh, you know, dappled light rays, uh, commonly referred to as god rays, in the scene. Uh, instead of actually rendering these with a volumetric fog or any of these other really like long uh, render effects, I actually modeled all of these light rays and then created this effect in uh, post-processing. So I want to show you how I can create these two types of masks um, in Maya. So first up, let's take a look at my character again. Uh, I'm going to go back to my master layer. And uh, you can see here I have my character. Let's go uh, turn back off wireframe. I don't need that anymore. So you see my character. Apparently I don't have his hands in this shot. I don't know why that is. <laughs> but uh, you know, here's my character. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to select all of his geometry. Let's get just the parts that end up in the, uh, the frame. So since uh, this is the only part we really see of him in the uh, scene, those are the only parts I'll really need. I am just going to get these elements, and I'm going to create another new render layer just with these three pieces of geometry in it. This is another new render layer. It's now called Layer 1. And this is all I have in this scene. In Layer 1, I'll just rename this Skin Mask. And since this is the only render layer I need to test right now, I will uncheck the checkbox for my depth and sky. That way I don't have to re-render this. If I was batch rendering this scene, I could turn all of these on. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of leave those off for right now. Uh, so skin mask is on. Uh, I'm going to go into my hypershade. And I'm going to apply some materials to this character. Uh, I have a two surface shaders actually that I'm going to make. I have these already in my hypershade here, but I'll just remake them. Uh, under Maya surfaces, I'm going to make a surface shader and then another surface shader so we can kind of see what's going on. Let me move this off to the side and we'll see this. So uh, this surface shader will just leave black and I'm going to apply this to his clothing. This surface shader we're going to make white and uh, I'm going to apply this to just his head. Done simple as that. I've now got this uh, render pass created or render layer created where uh, I have black for the clothing, white for the head. If I go into my camera, panels perspective, rendering camera, and go to view select camera, my background color is black. And if I render out this shot now from this render layer, here's what I have. It's just going to be a white spot where his head is. You'll notice my final gather is still on here, so uh, I can go into my features 
and also create a layer override turning off final gather and turning off ray tracing I don't need those anymore and uh, this should render out super fast there we go it's three seconds worth of render time I now have a mask just to cut out his skin so I can retone that and I can use this in the compositing pass uh, later on so that's this scene uh, let's take a look at this other scene uh, first let me just uh, save this shot I'll take a second and uh, then I'm going to go to open scene and uh, I'm just going to find this uh, other scene file that I have been working with uh, this is the inside of the truck shot that uh, I showed that render of previously so this is the shot that we're going to be looking at right now you'll see this when it opens so here's my scene. Uh, it's just the uh, the trailer of this. I kind of deleted out everything else. And uh, in this shot, uh, I have the trailer here. I've got the controls layer for that trailer. Then I've got my lights and this like uh, sky dome. Uh, the sky dome is just sort of tinted with a procedural ramp currently. It's this uh, surface shader that kind of is purple on one side and yellow on the other side and that's what you're seeing through the holes in the truck so I've got some clear color gradating going on in the background anyway that's kind of what this is uh, here for well in my shot this is my master layer uh, I actually decided not to use this master layer because it had everything in it this is kind of another way of working uh, you'll notice I had modeled out Let's uh, hide those lights real quick. You'll notice I had actually modeled out all of these light rays here. And I did this by selecting you know, one of these pieces here, selecting the outside edges, and then extruding back into the path that I wanted to create. And uh, I just then duplicated that and then combined the whole thing uh, and sort of placed those all around. And I've got this... Um, you know sh these shafts of light one more thing I did with these is I went into their render settings so in the attribute editor under the shape node for my god rays I went to render stats uh, I turned off cast shadows and receive shadows because they're light they shouldn't be casting and receiving shadows um, I turned off their primary visibility they're visible in reflections they're visible in refractions and I also turned off double-sided here they are double-sided here they are not double sided and I turned on opposite so we're only seeing the back sides of them you know this makes it so that uh, we're not seeing you know straight through the whole thing uh, we're just kind of seeing one face and we're not you know doubling up the opacity of this uh, in this render layer remember this is my um, my master render layer all my render stats are off here I have new layers that I made. I have an occlusion layer. We'll come back to making occlusion layers later. I have a new master layer, a layer that I called new master. And this is an exact duplicate of the master layer with everything except the god rays. So instead of turning the visibility off on the god rays in the master layer, I just made a new master layer in this scene and didn't include the god rays in it. And I just, I'm rendering this layer out instead of that actual master layer. And then in my God Rays layer, I just have a black surface shader assigned to everything else. And uh, I have a, I believe I have a Lambert in this case being assigned to my God Rays. Uh, I used a gradient here, so they actually fade out over distance. And I UV mapped these so that they go vertically. So they follow this gradient and they fade out from the center to the edge. This allows me, when rendered, to have like pretty much full white here, tapering to uh, less solid on this far side. Uh, that's all in my transparency map. And uh, I have this able to be separated out as a separate image is all. Uh, you know, one last thing you'll notice about this is that in my uh, render stats for this, in my shape node, in this layer, they still don't cast or receive shadows, but I did create a layer override making them visible in reflections and refractions and in primary visibility and all these other elements. So we can see them, they're just not casting shadows, which they shouldn't because they are light. So that's um, you know how I can create these masks. Uh, if I render this out, uh, let's go to my rendering camera here. 
Let's just do a test render, 50% size. Let's do a render from a rendering camera. Let's see how this turns out. Oh, I am on my occlusion layer, apparently. I forgot that I have multiple render layers here checked. So you notice it started with my occlusion because that one is checked. I'm going to uncheck occlusion and I'm going to uncheck my new master and leave only the god rays active. That should just make this work a bit faster. You can see here I've got some specialty just gradient going straight through the scene and I can take this render layer and I can composite it on top of my already existing background and that's how I got these god rays on top. It's just sort of a very quick cheap way to be able to do this. You can model the shape out and then you can just composite it right on. That's it. Everything else is a black background. Since it's a black background, I can use this as an additive layer or an overlay or a soft light. Any of these like blend modes that add light into the scene will work. And um, that's it. I'm going to stop this and not have it render out the full thing. Uh, this has been uh, video five on creating masks and creating uh, these specialty layers. We'll get back into compositing this in a bit. Uh, stay tuned. In video six, we're going to take a look at basic ambient occlusion. So stick around.